All right. Hey, everyone. A lot of people have been asking me about ketones and do you need to measure them? Do you need to be in ketosis or uh, what's the go with that? So uh, the short answer is I have never checked my ketones once in my entire life. I don't think that that's necessary to do unless you may be having problems with your energy levels or other sorts of issues that you think maybe uh, it's a ketone issue and you want to check. The only time I think that it's necessary to check your ketones is in the case of people suffering from cancer and they're going by the ketogenic metabolic therapy as laid out by Professor Thomas Seafried of Boston College, who I've done a podcast with, who, uh, if you haven't seen that, did an excellent job, absolute masterclass on cancer biology and what exactly is going on and, and how best to effectively confront it if that's something that you're suffering from or hopefully trying to avoid it as well. So in that case, you need to look at your GKI, your glucose ketone index. You can look that up by looking up Professor Seafried's name and GKI on Google Scholar. And that's Seafried, S-E-Y-F-R-I-E-D. And in that case, you should check your ketones and make sure that that's at an optimal level because that seems to show that um, the lower that number below two and, and below one if possible confers the best outcomes with uh, cancer sufferers in preclinical and clinical uh, situations. So that's really the only time. I don't check my ketones really for one reason. I'm not trying to be in ketosis. I'm sure I am in ketosis much of the time. Sometimes maybe I'm not, but I'm not too worried about that. What I'm worried about is eating to my biological design. I'm eating what all the best evidence shows we're designed to eat and we have been eating since the dawn of humanity and beyond, right? So if I'm doing that, if I'm eating to my biological design, my body will work to its biological design. If that means my ketones are high, great. If that means my ketones are low and I'm out of ketosis, so be it. I'm not too worried about that. I'm worried about living to my biological design, eating to my biological design, giving my body what it needs and allowing it to do its job. And, and so I just have faith that that's um, that that's doing what it's supposed to do when I give it what I'm supposed to give it and I feel good and I feel great and that's really all I am worried about. It is the case that if people do check their ketones that people in long-term ketogenic diets tend to drop their ketones fairly low, maybe not insignificant, but lower than you might expect. And this is normal. It's likely because people are getting primed and adapted to running on ketones. So they don't need to make just so much. They just need to make the right amount and your body is utilizing it very effectively. This is probably what's going on with the Inuit because they're just on lifelong ketogenic diets apart from the glycogen in the meat that they're eating, glycogen in the meat that we're eating as well. And they're going to be very efficient at running on those ketones and then making their own blood sugar and glycogen and so on. Because while their ketones may be low, they say, well, that's too low for them to be in ketosis. Well, they're making blood sugar, they're making glycogen, they're making ketones. So whatever you want to call it, that's a sustainable biochemical state. And that's a biochemical state that I uh, assume that I'm in and will be in long term. So I don't check my ketones. I don't check my blood sugar. I do check other bloods, mostly because other people care. I'm just confident that my body's doing what it's supposed to do. And I've taken bloods and proven to others because they seem to care so much. So in any case, guys, I hope that helps. And yeah, see you next time.